If you've spent any time researching anime fandom in the 1980s, then you're probably familiar with the Daikon opening animations. Produced for the Daikon 3 and Daikon 4 sci-fi conventions in 1981 and 1983, these amateur videos were a love letter to anime, sci-fi, and tokusatsu. Some of the staff behind these videos would become famous in the years to come as the founding members of Gainax, an animation studio that massively changed anime fandom and the entire industry with a little series called Neon Genesis Evangelion. Between production on the Daikon openings and Gainax's debut film, Royal Space Force, The Wings of Oniamis, there was a short-lived group of fans called Daikon Film. Named for the conventions they'd helped organize, Daikon Film was created in the aftermath of Daikon 3 to promote the next convention with three live-action fan films based on familiar tokusatsu series. Specifically, Ultraman, Super Sentai, and a somewhat obscure TV series from 1977 called Kaiketsu Zubat. Two of these films premiered in time, but the third one, Return of Ultraman, directed by future Evangelion creator Hideaki Anno, was delayed. These films proved successful enough that Daikon Film continued making fan films after the Daikon 4 convention, their efforts eventually culminating in Yamato no Orochi no Gyakushu, an original kaiju film based on a Japanese folktale. But the Daikon openings had opened new doors for these fans, and many of them stepped into the industry via the production of Royal Space Force. Daikon Film, as a group dedicated to making amateur work, wouldn't last, but its spirit would. Jump forward a few years, and Bandai had been pushing the original video animation or OVA format for a while now. They'd pioneered direct-to-video anime in 1984 with the sci-fi series Dalos. By 1988, they were going all in. That year, they produced two of the most formative sci-fi OVAs of the decade, Mobile Police Pat Labor and Aim for the Top Gunbuster. But between the release of the first volumes of both of these series, Bandai released another OVA, based on Masamune Shiro's manga series, Appleseed. Now, you're probably wondering, if Gunbuster was the series produced by Daikon Film veterans at Gainax, why am I talking about Appleseed? For starters, Gainax worked on Appleseed. It was one of the many, many work-for-hire animation jobs that the studio took on over its lifetime, and in particular, marked the studio's early relationship with Bandai. The 1980s were a really wild time for animation, and in particular, the video market opened up the opportunity for strange, creative, and absurd projects that wouldn't have made sense on any other format in any other era. One such example of that phenomenon was a three-minute live-action promotional video produced for the Appleseed anime. It, like the OVA itself, featured former Daikon film staff behind the scenes, and in many ways, it still embodied that fan film mentality they tapped into with parodies of Ultraman and Super Sentai years before. Who exactly pitched the idea of a live action promotional video is a fact that is perhaps lost to time. But there's no question about the video's most direct inspiration, and that's because it appeared in the pages of Bandai's B Club magazine. In issue number 23, sculptor Fuyuki Shinada showed off a full size Briarios mask modeled after the giant cyborg protagonist of Shiro's manga. 
That issue hit stores sometime around September of 1987 and was one of the many issues at B-Club that had been promoting the Appleseed manga long before work on the anime must have begun. The magazine regularly showed off different Appleseed custom projects and B-Club's own original Appleseed garage kits, but someone, somewhere, must have looked at Shinada's impressive replica and thought, why couldn't we make a full costume? Jumping back to Daikon Film for a bit, the group's final film was, as I previously mentioned, a kaiju film take on a Japanese folktale. Yamato no Orochi no Gyakushu was directed by Takami Akai. Now, he was one of the founders of Gainax, and one of the three main guys responsible for the original Daikon 3 opening animation, alongside Hideaki Anno and Royal Space Force director Hiroyuki Yamaga. Akai worked at Gainax for years, but he's probably best known for creating the video game series Princess Maker. In the early 1990s, when Gainax was struggling financially, way before Evangelion, it was Akai's Princess Maker games that really kept the studio afloat in an era when it looked like they might pivot entirely to video game production. Akai stepped up to direct the Appleseed Prologue video and even created some of the computer graphics featured in it. Hideaki Anno and Hiroyuki Yamaga also pitched in, though it's not entirely clear in what capacity. At just three minutes long, the prologue video was too short to really summarize the plot of Appleseed and clearly didn't have the budget, so instead it focused on the basics. Dunin and Briarios driving around, shooting random soldiers, and looking cool. Dunin was played by a 22-year-old American model named Katrina Casey. Information on Casey is hard to come by, and online the only trace of her relates to a small role she had in a 1989 Japanese comedy film called the Rapongi Banana Boys. Briarios was played by Takahiro Sano, who was well suited for the role as he was 190 centimeters or 6 feet 3 inches tall. Information on Sano is practically non-existent, even more so than Casey, and it's not clear how either of them got involved with the video production. Shot on 16mm film, production took three days in late January of 1988. The first day of filming took place in and around an abandoned factory behind Ariaki Studio, located on Tokyo Bay. Fans of late 1980s Japanese art house sci-fi films might recognize the location because it was also used in Mamoru Oshii's The Red Spectacles. The second day of filming moved to Shinjuku for city shots, close-ups, and miniature photography. That's right, the Appleseed prologue featured miniatures, though it's only about one shot and it's so quick it's easy to miss. The last day of filming took place at Tohoku Shinsha's studios and included the interior shots of Dunin in the computer room and capturing computer graphics used in the video, which again, were created by the director himself. According to B-Club's behind the scenes coverage, filming was uneventful and went exactly as planned, but the crew weren't averse to some on-set, spur-of-the-moment creativity. For example, one shot of a smoldering, decapitated cyborg was created by Hideaki Anno when he pulled the guts out of an old TV set, attached them to a mannequin, and dressed it all up in military fatigues. Effects work for the shoot was handled by a group called Big Shot, who had previously worked on the aforementioned film The Red Spectacles and also done effects work on a legit TV show called Bay City Decca. Guns used on screen were a mix of prop and modified airsoft guns from manufacturers like MGC and Tokyo Marui. The jeep that Briarios and Union cruise around in belonged to a manga artist named Suezin, who had worked as an animator on Royal Space Force. According to Yasuhiro Takeda's book, The No Tanki Memoirs, which is a great history on the origins of Gainax, that jeep had previously belonged to legendary animator and Hayao Miyazaki mentor Yasuo Otsuka. Otsuka, who sadly passed away in 2021, spent much of his retirement restoring old military vehicles and a few years after the release of Appleseed, he collaborated with Gainax on a multimedia CD-ROM dedicated to Jeeps. Barely a month after filming wrapped on the promo film, Bandai released a special prologue VHS tape that included the prologue, a short behind-the-scenes documentary, and some interviews. 
Despite the fact that it was a promotional piece for a then upcoming OVA, it still retailed for 4,800 yen, which was around $40 US at the time. In late March of 1988, three special screenings of Appleseed took place in the cities of Nagoya, Osaka, and Tokyo. The prologue was shown at these events alongside the anime itself, plus some guest appearances and prize giveaways. The actual Appleseed OVA wouldn't be released until June on VHS and Betamax at a retail price of 12,800 yen. The Laserdisc version hit stores a month later for a slightly more reasonable 9,800 yen. Advertisements at the time enthusiastically compared it to Blade Runner and the Terminator and described it as super strategic action. It wasn't the last time the Daikon film would reassemble, spiritually at least, because later in 1988, Akai directed a promotional video for the Dragon Quest video game series called Dragon Quest Fantasia Video. Fantasia Video drew on the connections formed by Gainax's sister company, General Products, who also produced a series of Dragon Quest garage kits at the time. Longer and with a bigger budget, Fantasia Video was an altogether more impressive bit of filmmaking and is well worth searching out. The Appleseed prologue wasn't riveting cinema, and even by the standards of its time, it was a low-budget, unambitious video. That said, it's a reminder of a simpler, maybe even sillier time when marketing teams at big companies could be convinced of the value of a bunch of people firing blanks in an old abandoned factory dressed up as super soldiers. It was a time when the novelty of seeing something recognizable from manga or anime rendered in real life, even cheaply and briefly, was pretty cool. It was an era when the notion of shoestring, do-it-yourself filmmaking crossed over with animation studios producing direct-to-video anime, all so that hardware manufacturers could push their new VCRs and laser disc players. It was complicated, but simple at the same time. That's not to say things were better or more interesting in 1988. Instead, I think the lesson here is that making movies with your friends is fun, even if you're all grown up and you work real jobs. Even if those real jobs are in the anime industry. If you've got this far, thanks for watching the first Zimmerit video on YouTube. I know you always hear it, but please like, subscribe, and share this video if you enjoyed it so we can grow the channel. Leave a comment if you think there's something we should cover in the future, and don't forget to visit zimmerit.moe for more content just like this.